Today's date is December 14th, 2019, and we're at the home of Lucille Gru at the Oakmont Senior Community in Clinton Township, Michigan, and the time is 10.15 a.m. Today, the person being interviewed is Lucille Dorothy Gru. Lucille was born on June 2nd in 1912, and she worked at the Briggs Company at the Connor Avenue plant as a riveter on the wings of B-17 bombers during World War II. The interview will be conducted by Ann Zimmerman, a member of the Rosie the Riveter Association. And this interview will be videotaped by Gary Delisle. Observers present are her grand niece, Janine Greathouse. Dorothy, hello. Can you please state your full name? Lucille Dorothy Grew. Very good, Lucille. And Lucille, what is your birth date? June the 2nd, 1912. And what city and state were you born? I was born in O'Fallon, Illinois. And is that near? Near St. Louis. Near St. Louis. And your parents' names? Ernst Grew, and his, my mother's name was Bertha Haberman. Okay. And then she married my father. Okay, and were they both born in Illinois? A, let me see, yes. They were, but your, but your grandparents were, came from what country? Germany. Germany. So your family has been in America a long time. My one grandmother was born in uh, Illinois. Okay. My father's mother was born in Illinois. But her husband came, was born in Germany. Germany, then. yes. Okay. And how many siblings do you have? I have their names. So you had, you're, you're the middle child. Yes. Okay. My oldest sister was Alma. My older brother was Arthur. Okay. My younger brother was Lester. My younger sister was Margaret. Wow, a big family. Yes. And what type of work did your dad do? He was an engineer in the coal mine at Buckner, Illinois. Okay, so what kind of, did he work underground? In the mines? No, no. He worked in a in a small building, and he was the only one working, okay. like at that time, mm -hmm. on that shift. And he took care of all the machinery from that building uh, on the ground on ground level. Okay. Did he have an education to get a job like that? I, not in school, the education I guess he got just on his own, <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> he was just clever enough to pick up and learn things on his own. Uh, yes. How much education, how many years of schooling did you have? I went three months in high school, that's all. That's, I mean, that So you was, finished the eighth grade? Yes. Okay. In three months in high school, and then I quit. Okay. Now you were born in 1912. Yes. What are your, what is? Do you have any early memories of what life was like? I, I remember when I must have been about three years old, and uh, I was playing in the dirt with two cousins, mm -hmm. and. Uh, that must have been in Illinois when we moved to Buckner. I remember my mother standing there saying, come on. And I says, well, where are we going? She says, we're going home. And I think that must have been when we moved to Buckner. Okay, and Buckner was also in Illinois. Yes. Yes, but you would deliver your dad's lunch too sometimes. Yes, after we lived in Buckner, my mother called me, and I said, where am I going? She says, do you want to take Papa his lunch? Mm -hmm. I don't care. 
and she handed me his bucket with his lunch and coffee in it, uh -huh. and my younger brother Lester and I walked to the mines, and we had to cross the road, cross a railroad track, mm -hmm. and then go through a field, and Papa was waiting outside that building watching for us to come. He knew you were coming. Yes. Did you have telephones when you no. were that young? No. No. So your mom... Must None have... of our neighbors had phones. But did you have electricity? No. Like, no. How did you get your power? How did you get... Let me see. I, I think we had electricity, okay. yes. Okay. But no telephones. No phone. No. Did you see a lot of automobiles? No. <laughs> Probably horse and buggy? People had horses uh, and, and at, wagons? At first... Uh, we didn't have a horse and buggy. Okay. We lived in a kind of a settlement outside of Buckner, mm -hmm. and everybody walked. They could walk to Buckner, and um, my father had a Mitchell car. That was the name of the car, a Mitchell. Okay. Real old because they used to laugh about it. After he got a new car, they would laugh about that old Mitchell. <laughs> how old it was. <laughs> so when the Depression hit in 1929, how did that affect your family? It didn't bother us as far as food and a warm house because by that time we had moved to the farm. Okay, so you grew your own vegetables. Yes. And you had animals? Animals, horses, cows, cows. pigs, chickens, ducks. And your dad was never laid off then, was he, at the mine? Just for about four days. Four days. And then he called him back because they needed coal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you grew up living on a farm, eating good, healthy food, fresh food. Yes. And your mom stayed, she, stayed at home. Yes. She worked. She was a hard worker on the farm. Mm -hmm. And they, my mother and father both loved the farm. That's why we moved there. Yeah. Do you remember anything about World War I? Um, did no. you have any relatives that were in the war? The World War I? World War I, like in 1918, 1919. Because you mentioned your mom's brother. Yes. My, uh, let's see. I remember standing in our backyard mm -hmm. at, at Buckner, outskirts of Buckner. Mm -hmm. And my cousin came out of our house, went down the steps and started walking towards town. And that's when I was about three years old. I can still see myself. And I said to my mother, where's he going? And she said, he's going to war. And so that was all of that. But he did come back, right? He came back, got married, had about 11 children. Okay, that's good, good news. <laughs> and then he lived in St. Louis. In St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you happen to start to come to Detroit, to Michigan? Well, I wanted to get a job. Okay. I was on the farm and, and I wanted to get a job and buy things. <laughs> Makes sense. Did you have your, your oldest sister, Alma, Yes. She got married to a man named John? Yes. Great House? Yes. And did they come to Michigan first? Yes, they came about a year before I did, oh, okay. maybe more than that. Okay. And um, then Alma suggested I come up here to get a job. Okay. So I did. Yeah. So what was the first job you had in Michigan? I did housework. And uh, then after that, I worked at the Fort Shelby Hotel, cleaning rooms. In Detroit. And every summer I would go home in the spring, come back to Michigan in the fall and get those jobs. And then after I worked in the Fort Shelby Hotel and went home, and when I came back, that's when I went to Briggs. Okay. Got a job. But around 1935 
you lost your parents in a very short amount of time. My mother died in 1936. 36, okay. About September, August or September. Okay. Yeah. And then your, your father passed away. He died three years later. Okay. Yeah. How did your mom die? What, what did she? She had cancer. She had cancer. She'd okay. had it a long time. All right, wow. Yeah. She was in her, her 50s. She was not that old. 53. 53. And what did your dad die of? What did he? Uh, he had eaten some grapes okay. and swallowed the seeds. Okay. And he got sick. And my brother kept telling him, go to the doctor, and he wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. Finally, he got worse, and my brother put him in a car and took him to the hospital. But he died before he got to the hospital. Okay, that would have been 30, 39. 30, 36. 36, okay. Yeah. So, so now your, your mom and dad are gone. So is that when you kind of decided to move to, to Detroit? Kind of you- Pardon me? You moved to Detroit almost me? permanently. Yes. You. Yes, I did. And where did you, so you got a job at Briggs Automotive. Yes. Yes. Did your brother, did he also have a job at Briggs too? Not at that time. Or your brother-in-law, your brother-in-law. Pardon me? Your brother-in-law, that would have been oh, almost John, husband great John, yes. Yeah, he, he came here about a year, about in 1935. Okay. And uh, he worked, he worked at Briggs, I think a year before I did. Was, was that on Mack Avenue? Yes. And Mac. So you were making cars, autom automobiles. I was working on the bodies. On the bodies. Not the whole car on the bodies. Did you rivet? Were you riveting then or just doing no. other things? Riveting started in, in 1941. 41. Yeah. So were you, were you living with your brother or your sister and her husband? Yes, at first okay. I was, yeah. And then when, Jan when December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. what, do you remember what happened then when they bombed? Yes, I remember the, the news. The news, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what, did, how did, what happened to your job at Briggs? Automotive? I was laid off while okay. they uh, changed over to war work. To war work. And then, as soon as they were ready, they called me back okay. to work at Connor. At Connor. Yeah. So, I, so Briggs Manufacturing was owned by Walter Briggs, yeah. who also owned the Detroit Tigers and Briggs Stadium. Yes. And then they kind of did a partnership with Boeing. So when they opened up the Connor plant, you were... Did they send you a telegram saying, we want to rehire you, come back to work? How did you find out about the job? You mean, you mean after, after, the, after war the war started? After the war started. Oh, after the war started, they sent me a telegram to come to the employment office, and then they put me to work at uh, Connors. At Connor, yeah. Connor Avenue. Yes. And what was your job? What kind of work? Uh, riveting. Yes. Did they train you how to do that? Did you? Uh, they just showed, gave me the gun and so you had <laughs> showed me how, and <laughs> then I started work right was away. Was it heavy? Was it a heavy gun? No. 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 Okay. What did you have to wear? Did you uh, have a uniform? Did they supply you with any clothes? They didn't tell me I had to wear certain things, only I had to keep my head covered with a scarf a around. Scarf so that my hair wouldn't be out. Be out. Yeah. But you were allowed to wear makeup and... Yes. My know, own clothes. Your own clothes. Slacks. Slacks. Mm -hmm. Very good. And you worked right alongside the men. Yes. And some, did you prefer the working with the men over the women sometimes? Uh, it didn't make any difference. <laughs> but they, and blacks and whites worked all together? Yes, they did. And everybody seemed to be getting along at that time. You, you all, Real good, yes. You worked hard together, yes. trained together. Yes. Do you remember how much money, how, what you made per hour? Yes. 
When I first started, you mean on cars? On, or well, how about on the cars? What did you make on the cars before the war? I made $16 a, a week. Okay. No, what, let's see, 40 cents an hour. 40 yeah, that cents was an hour. $16 a week. And then after the war, when you went to work at Connor Avenue, yes. did your pay go up? It did, but I don't remember how yes. much. But not Not a whole lot. But enough for the lady said that you would buy, you would buy war bonds or, or yes. savings bonds out yes. of your pay. Yes. Every yeah. week. I think so. I, think so. And that, I I didn't have to, but I whenever I felt like it, I'd buy some. But did you have extra money to go shopping? Yeah, gradually I got a little more. Mm -hmm more yeah and how did you have a car were you driving yet no no so not how, at, not at first so no you, so how did you get around i rode to work with my brother-in-law brother. john okay. Friedhouse, and uh otherwise i'd ride the bus and where did john and alma they had a house around what on Broadacre Broad and, and Gratiot. In Gratiot. Yeah. It sounded like it was a little east of Detroit, maybe in Warren or East Detroit. It was, so it was yeah, northeast. Northeast. Yeah. So John, would you would drive in with him together. Yes, I'd ride with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that made it interesting. Yeah. So when you, was the plant noisy? Was it dirty? Uh, when I, let me see. When I first started to work, I worked in the sewing room. Mm -hmm. Not sewing, but on other jobs. It wasn't noisy, no, mm -hmm. nor dirty. And then later on, part of the time, I worked in the paint department where they had hoses, air blowing, mm -hmm. and uh, we couldn't hear each other talk. We learned to read lips and motions, <laughs> okay. but it was a good job. But your hearing hasn't been affected. Your hearing is pretty well, good. Well, I'm wearing hearing aids. Yeah, it does affect your hearing. But uh, after a certain length of time, they got earplugs, and people had to put the earplugs in. Well, that to, was good. Yeah, to that save their ears. So. Did you, did you go, did you have a lot of fun? Were you, did you have time to go yes. downtown? Oh, yes. That was, I did that often, yeah. What shift would you work mostly? Part of the time I worked on the day shift at first, and then later I, I got to work on, uh, part of the, no. First I worked day shift, and then I worked afternoons, mm -hmm. And then I got back on days and stayed on days. And you worked at the Connor Avenue plant for the whole time of the war, from 1940? 41 to about, what, 45 or 46. Whenever, whenever the war stopped, we stopped doing riveting. Okay. Yeah. Did you get laid off? I was laid off while they changed back to car bodies. Car bodies. Yeah, Briggs bodies. So then you went back to work for Briggs Company. Yes, on Mac Avenue. On Mac Avenue. Yeah. Which is now the Chrysler Fiat plant. Now it is? Now, it's, I think they're... Yeah. So then it's it still, that, that operation's still going on. So Briggs was sold to Chrysler. Yes. So you stayed yes. with Chrysler. Yes. And you retired from Chrysler. So how many years did you work? Pretty steady. 30, let me see, from 1936 to 1971. A long time. Yeah. Almost 40 years. Almost 40 years. Yeah. Did you always work in the factory? Or did you have office work? In the factory. In the factory. Yeah. So I, you know, when I look at you standing, I mean, Lucille, you're you're proud of your age, aren't you? Well, how, I'd, I'd how like old are you? How old are you? This is 2019. How old are you? Right now. Right now. 107 
years old. 107 years old. Yes. You know, you were born, you were born before the women, women got the right to vote in 1920. So you were born before that. So yeah. you, you have seen a lot of changes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And in the working conditions. Yeah. Yes. In the factory, they yes. Every now and then, there'd be something, some new rule mm -hmm. to make it safer. Right. Uh -huh. And that's a good thing. Yeah. That was a good thing. So, we, let's go back to what did you do for having fun? What was your favorite store downtown? Uh, Crowley Milner's. Okay. And then Hudson's. Oh, I, I went downtown a lot. How Were you driving yet? Did you have your own car yet? Not at first. Okay. Let's see. I think I was about, I don't know what year. I was about 54 years old before I learned to drive okay. and got a car. Any boyfriends? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Anybody in particular? Any? Well, I went with John mostly. Okay. John Kravitz. John Kravitz. Yeah. Was, yeah. How did you meet John? At a dance downtown. Was he in the service too? Was he in the service? He, he was in the service, yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So you would go dancing at some of the... F right downtown on Woodward Avenue, there were, well, there was the Greystone, oh, and then there was another dance. I don't remember the name of it. And I'd go with other girls, and uh, we'd, we'd go quite often. And the Vanity Take. Ballroom on Jefferson? Vanity, yeah, I went there not very often, okay. but some. Uh -huh. But John, John was a great dancer, right? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good? Yes. <laughs> and uh -huh. Boblo Island, did you go to Boblo Island? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. The State Fair? Pardon? The State Fair? State Fair? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those were all great places to have a nice, nice time together. Did you go out to eat a lot? Uh, not a lot, no. Okay. People didn't go out to eat as much then as they do now. Mm -hmm. I think they didn't have as much money then mm -hmm. to go out. But you'd, you mentioned that you would make your lunches during the war. Yes. What, what did you make for yourself to eat? Oh, a sandwich with lunch meat, and I'd take a, some fruit and some like celery and carrots raw, mm -hmm. put that in my lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you had, you kept up with some of the gals that you worked with. Do you remember the two names? There were two ladies that you said you kind of kept in touch after the war. Oh, yes, my good friend Irene Barber, mm -hmm. she's not living anymore. Okay. Irene, oh, yeah, and Anne Skaropinski. Uh, right now I can't think of but, any more. But so you made friends, you had a good social life. Yes. How long did you stay living with your brother and your sister? Um, let me see. Uh, after I worked a while, mm -hmm. then I moved into Detroit. Okay. First I got a room and then I got an apartment. Okay. My first apartment was in the basement of somebody's house okay. for a couple of months. And then that's when my friend Myrtle, let's see, she asked, she asked this man if I could have an apartment where she was living. Mm -hmm. He said, no, he didn't have any. Uh -huh. And then one day at work, I was talking to Myrtle, and this man saw me talking to her, and he asked her, who was that? And she, to she told him, that's the one who wants the apartment. Well, yeah, you tell her she can have an apartment. <laughs> You look like a decent woman. Yeah. And Myrtle, well, everybody knew Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Myrtle. Myrtle had a lot of friends, a lot of boyfriends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Because they said finding an apartment was pretty hard because there were so many people coming in to Detroit to work. So yes. So it wasn't easy to find a place to live. Yeah, and I liked my apartment. And you liked your independence. Well, I had to like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you and John were, were a couple. For well, just off and on. Off and on. And, yeah. But you knew John a long time. Right? Yes, a long time. But you would mention that you never got married. No. Like you had a good thing going. If it's not yeah. broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a pretty good attitude. Uh -huh. You knew you yeah. were independent. Yeah. Had a good job. Yeah. So well, John and I, we got along good, but then there were some disagreements, okay. and nah, I wasn't quite ready to put up with. <laughs> okay. All right. But they, that's all right. Yeah. You know, I I read somewhere that the Briggs Company, the Connor Avenue plant, this is how efficient. The workers were there. The Briggs Company was so efficient in making aircraft components at the Connor Avenue plant that the plant was given the Army Navy E Award for war production in September of 1942 for for building, helping build the Flying Fortress, the B-17. Mm -hmm. And you were employed at Connor Avenue at that time. Oh yeah, that's the only place I worked during the war. During the war, at Connor, yeah. For the then when I got called back, I went back to Briggs mm -hmm. on Mac Avenue. Do you have any memories of when the war ended? Like yes. <laughs> what was life like? Were people going crazy? <laughs> I at that time I was living with my sister Alma. Mm -hmm on Broadacre and Gratiot, that's out around 14 Mile Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, David was about five or six years old. Alma and John wanted to go into Mount Clemens to church. And uh, Alma said she couldn't go because she had David there. And I said, well, I'm not going anywhere. You can go and I'll take care of David. Mm -hmm. So, while they were gone, Mary Ann, we called her Mary Ann, Mary Lucille, and her husband came out to Alma's and wanted to take me with them. They were going to go downtown because everybody was celebrating. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I can't go because I'm watching David. So they went. They started, they, they got to 14 Mile Road, changed their mind and came back and uh, said David could go along. Okay. So the th Marianne, Jack and I and Dave sat in the front seat and we went downtown, Jack was driving and when you got downtown they had to drive real slow because so many people were out and nobody was looking where they're walking. <laughs> Woodward Avenue, no cars were going downtown because uh, the street was full of people, mm -hmm. everybody kissing and hugging and singing and celebrating. Celebrating. Yeah. Did, did any of your brothers go into service? Lester, Lester, yes, and Arthur, my older brother. Arthur was in England. He was, when planes would come in after whatever they did, his job was, was washing off the planes with gasoline. They had us. Wow. All I know is the way he said it. They was in a, some building and they would use gasoline like water and it would run through the floor so it could be used again. Okay. And that's what he did in the Army. And Lester, I was in Detroit at the time, and Lester was in Illinois, and he was in the Army. And before he left to go anywhere, he stepped in a hole and broke his leg. Oh my. So he couldn't go that way. Okay. And then he was discharged before when the war ended. Okay. Okay. 
So that's all, that's all they did. Well, Arthur had quite a dangerous job. Yes, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. And Lester, unfortunately, he was the first one of your siblings to, to pass Le away. Yes. Lester, yeah. Yeah, 22. That's awfully young. That was too young, yeah. But it wasn't because of the war wound that he had... No, he had cancer. He had cancer, too. Okay. Yeah, he was working in Buckner. In yeah. Buckner. Yeah. So you still had relatives that stayed in Buckner, Illinois. I still have two nephews in Illinois. Okay, yeah. okay. Do you ever get back down there to... I Yeah, be, before I got so old, I, <laughs> no. I would go about, oh, every summer. Do they still have the farm, the original farm? Uh, no. No, okay. That was sold, and they live in the country, but they don't do farming. Okay, okay. So after the war, you worked for, you went back to the automobile plant, yes. Briggs. Yeah. And then Briggs became Chrysler. Yes. So you worked there. And you've always lived in apartments. Yes. So kind of, you mentioned one, LeMay and Jefferson. That's the first the one. The first one. That's yeah. right by the, almost by Belle Isle, by... Not far from Belle, Belle Isle. Isle. It's close to the waterworks. To the waterworks. Yeah. And then you moved to someplace on Cadu. Yes. Was that Can't. a nicer a nicer apartment building? Yes. Yes. Nice. I like that one. Yeah. So yeah. independence. Yeah. I, I look at a woman who's very modern. Very independent, making her own paycheck. Did you buy, finally buy your own car after you learned oh, how to yes. drive? Yeah. What what did you own? What kind of a car did you buy? Do you remember? Mm. I I think it was a Chevy. Chevy. Because <laughs> yeah. you liked it. Yeah. 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 You could make up your own mind. Yeah. yeah. I I bought it from John. He had it, and he wanted to get a new car. Okay. So he sold me that one real cheap. <laughs> but he knew he knew it was a good car. Yeah. He would. He's going to take good care of you. Yeah. When did John pass away? When? When? Yeah. Oh, let me see. I. That was after I retired. After you retired. But because yeah. I know Janine calls calls him Uncle John, so he was a big part of your life. Yes, he was. Yeah. And you would go? Did you go ice fishing? Did you ever go ice fishing <laughs> with him? He took me a couple of times, and because he had to bait the hook and take the fish <laughs> off, that was enough of that. <laughs> and your sister Alma and her husband John. Yeah. Where did they finally end up? Did they move by the by the lake too? By they lake? moved north of Selfridge oh, Air Force. Selfridge. Okay. Then it was Selfridge Field. Okay. Yeah. So you've and always stayed on the east side. Pardon? They always stayed on the east side. Yes. Yes, yes. Because John wanted to live near the water and go fishing. Mm -hmm. And after they moved out there, he didn't go fishing very much. <laughs> but it was nice out there. Because that was Alma's husband was also John. Well, that's who I was talking about and, then. And you, but you're... Significant other we're going to use was John also. Yes. John Kravitz. Yes. So you lived a pretty nice, after you retired, did you spend a lot of time by the water, boating and uh, enjoying? I didn't live in, out where Alma lived. Okay. I'd go out to visit, but uh, yeah. But you, I, moved, you moved from Kanju. Did you move to a condominium? I had an apartment. Apartment, okay. Yeah. And how long, when did you, when did you stop driving? How old were you when you stopped driving? 98. In 1998? Yes. No. Age. Oh, I was 98 years old. Because, you know, women, my, I'm 64, I want to know, I want to know how you did it. So you drove until you were 98 years old. I what? You drove until you were 98 years old. Yes. That's great. Yeah. And I was still a good driver. <laughs> yes. Because I, that's what I noticed about you right off the bat. How tall are you? Did five I? 5'8". Eight. 5'8". Five eight. Yeah. And you're still 5'8". Just about. Just about. See? If I lost any, it'd be about a quarter of an inch. Okay. Yep. So when did you, now you're living in a beautiful Oakmont 
This is a senior apartment building. Yes. When did you move here? How many years have you been here? I came here a year ago, November 3rd. So you kept your apartment on your own? Well, almost. I bought a condominium after, let me see, after I retired. But you were living on your own though, doing yes. all your own housekeeping and, and yes. getting around shopping. Yes. So a year ago you decided to move into a senior apartment again. <laughs> Janine found this place. It's beautiful. And I like it here. It's easy. You've got elevators. And you still walk. You're still walking. With the walker. With the walker. Very little. I mostly go in the wheelchair. If you wheelchair. have a long, a long distance to go, you go in a wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, Janine takes me. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, you've seen so many changes. I mean, yeah. how often do we get to talk to somebody who's 107? Is there a secret to living to 107? No, it just oh, happens. It just happens. Yeah. But maybe because you ate a lot of fresh food? That might have something to do with it. That might, ha that might have a lot to do with it. I've always eaten mm -hmm. carrots and mm -hmm. celery raw, raw and cabbage and uh, salads. Salads. Yeah. Did you ever smoke? One day. One day. <laughs> that I, was... I wanted to see what it was like. Of I found course. out, so I said, that's enough. Well, and I never touched them since then. Well, you sound like a smart woman. You, you know your limits. You know what you can handle. Yeah. What, what kind of hobbies do you have? Crocheting. Crocheting. And I used to go bowling a lot and dancing and swimming, a lot of swimming. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. But I, you mentioned, because even in your apartment, you have bags of, of, of things that you are, have made. You make afghans? A lot of afghans, yeah. And you work with one of your friends has a outreach program or through the church? Yes. They gave them to uh, needy people. And I made a lot of Afghans for other people that they'd buy the yarn and I'd make them Afghans. Yeah. So that keeps you really busy. Yeah, and I like doing it. Hands, because your hands look good. You've got. Yes. They're, you know, I don't. Do you have a lot of arthritis in your? No arthritis. No. Wow. No. You've got good genes. I'm lucky that I didn't get arthritis. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And when you see the young women today, you were that age. You were all of our ages. I mean, you know what it's like to be <laughs> 20, 40, 60, 70, 80. What do you think about young women today? Are they, are they as, as capable of dealing with problems like you might have been growing up? Yes, only they have a different, different uh, way of dealing with what they have to deal with today. It's, yeah, yeah. If I was young all at once right now, I wouldn't be able to deal with it. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, talking to you and your friends, you would say your mom, your mom would make your, she would make a pair of pants for you. Make what? A pair of slacks. She did make me a pair of slacks when I was, oh, a young teenager. And maybe without a pattern. Just of looked, course, yeah. No pattern. No pattern. But able, you were able to figure things out. Yeah. I mean, your dad, without any education, had an engineering job in yes. the mine, working yeah. a pretty responsible job. Yes. And you, I mean, you worked in different factories. You had to change. You had a lot of skills that you just kind of watched something done once, and you could do it. In the factory. In the factory, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, where I was working, once once you did one job, you knew all, all the rest the of it. Yeah. But you didn't have any problems coming from a farm to a big city when you were in your 20s, 30s. No. All the different kinds of people. Yeah. Was that yeah. different for you? It sure was, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I know there were, there were, you lived through two race riots. There was a race riot in 1943. Yeah. 
because there wasn't a lot of housing and there was a lot of um, unrest. And there was a riot in 1967. 67. Do you remember seeing the fires in 1967? Yes, I was working at that time. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, my niece Mildred and I had been in Canada out at Point Pelee. Mm -hmm. When we came up over the bridge coming home, we saw all that smoke over there in that one place. We wondered what it was. After I got home, I found out it was a race riot. A uh, race riot, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or some kind of a riot. It's a riot, yeah. So you lived through it. You made it through. You stayed in the area. You never, you stayed in, in the Detroit area. Yes. It was during the heyday of when Detroit was at its greatest. It was good I, living in Detroit mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. Well, now it's coming back. It is coming back again. That, I hope it does. Do yeah. you have any, any words of wisdom, anything that you would like to tell young people today? I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know of anything, yeah. no. You've got, what you did, you just did one day at a time. Yeah. You weren't afraid of too many. Is there anything you're afraid of? Is there anything of... You mean like people or? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you could talk to anybody, Lucille. Well, I'm not a talker, actually. <laughs> You're a good listener. <laughs> yes. Maybe that's what makes you special, <laughs> too. Yeah. Well, if there's anything you want to add right now, to this story, you're, you're adding to the history of World War II era. I, w I wouldn't know what to add. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, we want to thank you, you know, Lucille. We want to thank you for agreeing to do this interview today in your home. We want to thank you for sharing your memories of working during World War II in the Connor Avenue plant as a riveter on a B-17 airplane wings. Mm -hmm. And for letting us know what life was like in Detroit during the war years. You have reached a grand age of 107 this year, 2019. And the tribute rosies from the Yankee Air Museum honor you as a home front veteran by sending your story to the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. as part of the Veterans History Project. And we thank you for making this history more accurate and more honest and colorful. And we know you make your family proud. I know Janine is here and her husband, Dennis, and their grandchildren of your sister, Alma and John, and I know they're proud of you and your country's proud of you. So we want to thank you. And we just want to say that this interview is being conducted on behalf of the Oral History Project at the Yankee Air Museum in Belleville, Michigan. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Very good. <laughs>